The Middle Ages, with its crippling poverty and lack of law and order, was the perfect time for unscrupulous men to turn to a life of crime and roam around the countryside causing untold trouble. But not all gangsters were poor, some came from noble families, and they certainly weren't all Robin Hoods, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Most were brutal, ruthless, and out for themselves. Let's travel back in time now and take a look at some of the more notorious gangsters of the Middle Ages whose crimes ranged from rabbit robbing to rape and murder. Welcome to Medieval Madness. Organized crime. Today, we might think about the global drug cartels when we hear about criminal gangs, but gangsters have existed for thousands of years. In the Rome of 50 BCE, Milo and Clodius were organizing bands of armed slaves and hiring thugs to fight out their differences, just like modern day Crips and Bloods in the US. In the Constantinople of the 6th century, the rival Green and Blue gangs came together through a common cause and turned on the Emperor Justinian, with riots that killed tens of thousands of people and destroyed half the city. Herowood the Watchful One Herowood the Wake was born around the year 1035 in Lincolnshire, England. Reliable historical sources relating to Hereward the Wake are few and far between, and often contradictory. We know that he was an Anglo-Saxon nobleman who resisted the invasion of William the Conqueror and his Normans in 1066. In the Jester Hawadi, a more romanticized account of his life written by a monk named Richard from Ellie, Hereward was banished by his father for disobedience and antisocial behavior, and he was declared an outlaw by King Edward the Confessor at the age of just 18. So Hereward went off on his adventures, which included fighting a rampaging bear in Northumbria to save his godmother and her daughters, protecting a Cornish princess from unwanted male attention, and then fighting the people of Skaldamariland to help the Count of Flanders. By the time of the Norman Conquest in 1066, Hereward was a mercenary and the Normans had confiscated his lands back home in Lincolnshire. On his return there, he found that his brother had been killed and his head displayed on a spike. Herowood took revenge by killing 15 Norman soldiers at a drunken feast. In 1070, the Danes arrived and went to Ely. The people there were hopeful that the Danish army would help them overthrow the Normans. Herowood and his gang of outlaws joined the Danes and helped them pillage the monastery at Peterborough. He justified this by saying he wanted to save the treasure there from the Normans. However, the Danes made a deal with King William and hot-footed off back home with their plunder. Now, Hereward and his men were left to face William's men alone. They made their last stand on the Isle of Ely in 1071, where according to one of the Anglo-Saxon chronicles, the men were overwhelmed by the Normans and surrendered, quote, except for the valiant Hereward who fled with a few men through the fens. His life after the fall of Ely remained shrouded in mystery. It's said he negotiated peace with the king, was pardoned, and lived a quiet life after. The Anglo-Saxon chronicler Geoffrey Gamer said that he was murdered by Norman knights. Maybe he just went on the run and was never heard of again. Either way, he became a hero to the Saxon people and a symbol of resistance against oppression. The Cotterells Led by James Cotterell, he was backed by his brothers John and Nicholas. During the late 1320s and early 1330s, England was in a period of political turmoil. King Edward II had lost the support of his nobles because of his reliance on favorites such as Hugh de Spencer, who he showered with gifts and lands. Mainly based in the Derbyshire Peaks, the Cotterells hid themselves in the shadows of heavily wooded areas such as Sherwood Forest and were known as a Greenwood Gang. Their first crime, at least the first one recorded, happened in 1328 when the boys were paid by Robert Bernard, the parish priest of Bakewell, to beat up and rob his successor. The gang worked as fixers for the clergy and the wealthy, and because they were protected by several members of parliament, they had no problem recruiting new associates. In 1330, when Roger de Wensley, Lord of Mapleton, was sent to arrest the Cotterell brothers, he ended up joining them instead. Despite being involved in extortions, oppressions, receiving of felons, usurpations, and ransoms, James Cotterell was pardoned of all wrongdoing in 1351. The Folvilles John, Lord of Ashby Folville, had seven sons. 
The second son Eustace was well known for opposing Edward II's dishonest and ineffectual reign, and his younger brothers agreed with him. Together, the boys committed countless crimes in their pursuit of justice against the crown, including robbery, kidnap, and murder, often on behalf of other people. In 1326, Eustace took a gang of 50 men with him to ambush and kill Sir Roger de Bella, the corrupt Baron of Exchequer, who was an ardent supporter of the hated dispensers. They did this by, quote, driving a long knife down past his collarbone and into his heart. Bella's murder was likely well accepted by many, but it meant that the Fulvilles were outlawed and fled the country. Once there was a new king on the throne in 1327, the Fulvilles were pardoned and came home to cause mayhem by, quote, roaming the highways looking for victims to threaten, rape, and incarcerate for ransom. Next, they were hired by clergymen to burn down a rival's watermill for 20 pounds. Then they joined other gangs, including the Cotterells, to kidnap a wealthy royal judge named Richard Willoughby. The fourth of the Folville brothers, Richard, was described as a wild and daring man prone to acts of violence, despite being made rector of his small country parish in Rutland. Richard was the only Folville brother who faced any punishment when he was dragged from his church and beheaded. Willoughby was released after a huge ransom was paid and the Folville gang fled to Derbyshire, where they allied themselves with the Cotterell gang and rode with armed forces secretly and openly. The men who had killed Richard had to be absolved of the murder because he was a priest. They were whipped in front of the main churches in the area as a penance. Adam the Leper the 14th century was a great time for outlaws in England, what with political upheaval, the Black Death, famine, depopulation, and the Peasants' Revolt. Unlike their Midlands counterparts, the Cotterells and the Fulvilles, Adam and his gang were active in the southeast of England and worked within an urban setting rather than the countryside during the 1330s and 40s. Adam's crew specialised in theft. Their most famous crime involved a London merchant who was employed by Queen Philippa of Hainault, wife of Edward II. The trader had some of the Queen's jewels in safekeeping at his home. The Adam gang attacked under the cover of night and demanded that the treasure be handed over. The merchant refused, so the gang set his house on fire and took the jewels anyway. Philippa also lost the pricely sum of £500, the equivalent of around £380,000 in today's money, when her collector of rents was attacked and robbed on his way home. Adam was caught and put on trial, but his gang descended on the court's proceedings and attacked anyone who stepped outside, so the authorities had to let Adam go to continue his criminal activities. It is thought that he died in the 1360s. Roger Godbird Roger is thought to be one of the men behind the legend of Robin Hood, and he really did like to hang around Sherwood Forest and wind up the Sheriff of Nottingham. Like the Folvilles and Cotterells, Roger was another Midlander who lived around the Leicestershire area. He became a fugitive after fighting alongside the Earl of Leicester, Simon de Montfort, against King Henry III at the Battle of Eversham in 1265. When Montfort was killed, Roger found himself on the run for taking against the king, just like the Robin Hood of legend. After being captured, he was able to escape and went on to lead a group of outlaws who got themselves into all sorts of trouble. The men committed burglary, arson, robbery, and murder. They even attacked Stanley Abbey, stole money, and killed one of the monks there. Eventually, Roger was captured and tried at the Tower of London, but pardoned by King Edward I when he returned from Crusade. Some sources say Roger returned to his farm and died there peacefully, others that he died in Newgate Prison in 1276. Folk Fitzwarren Born into a noble family around 1160, Folk was said to have played with the four young sons of Henry II, but came to blows with Prince John over a game of chess. After this, John went to complain to his father, who had him beaten for telling tales. Perhaps John held a grudge over the incident, because later, in 1200, when he became king, he granted the estate of Whittington and its castle to a Welshman instead of Folk, knowing full well that it was Folk's hereditary claim. Folk went rogue after he was denied his familial lands, and along with his brothers, other tenants, and knights, he decided to fight back. There were 52 followers involved in the uprising, and they were all declared outlaws by the king, who sent soldiers to deal with the problem. After causing trouble for three years, the king gave in and Folk was fined and pardoned, and awarded right and inheritance at Whittingdon. He went back home, and is thought to have lived well on into his 90s. John Fitzwalter John was another nobleman known for his criminal activities. 
The Fitzwalters were powerful landowners in the county of Essex with property in Norfolk and London. John's first foray into crime appears to be in 1340 when he was part of a 30-strong gang that unlawfully entered the park belonging to John de Seagrave. The hoodlums then, quote, hunted therein, carried away goods and deer from the park, and assaulted men and servants. Now, with the support of powerful men, John branched out on his own and assembled a crew, earning himself a considerable reputation as a thug of the First Order, becoming known as the most feared man in Essex. No crime was off limits, they ran a protection racket, seized property in lieu of pavement, used extortion, fixed jury, stole cattle, and committed larceny and murder, beheading one unfortunate man at the side of the road. They even besieged the town of Colchester, beating up men and ambushing anyone entering or leaving, until no man could go to a market or fair. In 1351, John was arrested and held in the Tower of London. Other gang members were convicted and were either fined or imprisoned, some were pardoned, and only one was hanged. After a year, John was also pardoned and released, but the king wanted to make an example of the man whose crimes ranged from running off with someone else's rabbit to rape and murder. He was fined the huge sum of £847, around half a million pounds today. John was allowed to return to his estates and was still paying off the fine 10 years later when he died in 1361. So how were these people able to get away with it? Well, the gangs often had links to the richest and most powerful men in the land, including churchmen, and the gangs were often committing crimes on their behalf. Even when the gangsters were brought before the courts, they were nearly always acquitted because threats and bribes were commonplace, and both the jurors and even the judges were just too scared to convict them. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Medieval Madness. Please do subscribe if you're enjoying these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one. Have a great week. Cheers!